Cool. Cool. All right. So now let's flip back to page 161. On page 161, I want to pick up some other listings. There's the open listing and all of this. The next one's called a net listing. A net listing is where the client receives a net amount of money and whatever you sell the property above that number is your commission. Now, here's the problem. A net listing is potentially illegal unless you do two items, all right? You must do these two things. One, you have to disclose to everybody that it is a net listing. So on top of the listing agreement, you would write net listing. All right, that's the first thing you have to do. The second thing you have to do is disclose the maximum commission you are going to earn. Like eight grand, 20 grand. This whole purpose, which potentially makes this illegal, is this. Certainly there would be no unscrupulous broker out there that would tell the little old lady in Broad Ripple who bought her house 40 years ago, don't worry, honey, I'll get your 20 grand back and whatever I sell it for above that, I'll keep, and then goes out and sells it for $300,000, all right? That's what this is designed to prevent. Remember license laws, number one goal is what? Protect the public. So this is how we protect that from happening. If this happens and they fail to disclose it or fail to write their commission, they could potentially get in trouble with the commission. So a net listing, you have to disclose it's a net listing and you have to tell the maximum amount of your commission. Now, here comes some math for the day. Fun math, all right? And you guys are going to have to answer, so get ready. Now, there is the math to calculate the net listing. And it is calculated exactly the same as a person who comes to you with this scenario, which by the way is very common. They come to you and they go, Raymond, I'm in trouble with the bank. I've lost my job threatening to foreclose on my property. I want you to sell my property for me at what I owe and I just want to walk away. This was a very common scenario in that 2008, 2009, 2010. You know, people would call us up and go, hey, just sell it for what I owe, pay my closing costs, pay your commission, and I want to walk away so I don't get in trouble, all right? Cool? So here we go. So let me ask you a question. A client calls you and says, I'm in trouble with the bank. I want you to sell my house, and I want to walk away with nothing. Just get the bank off my back. And she tells you, I owe $100,000 exactly. What is the minimum amount of money that I can sell the property for? And you say, okay, well, let me help you out. You've got $1,500 in closing. I know this from my experience. And Raymond, my boss, says I have to charge a 7% commission. So my question to you is, they gotta pay off exactly 100 grand, they gotta pay their 1500 in closing, 
and they've got to pay the modulin group 7%. So what's the minimum number they can list the property at? This, my friends, is a real life scenario that happens. All right? So let's go through this. They owe 100. There's 1,500 in closing costs. And there's a 7% real estate commission that has to be paid. So, my question to you guys what's the minimum number that they can charge and walk away free and clear? All right, go. 108,000. 108,000. All right, I think I heard Cameron first. What'd you say, Cameron? 108,500. Okay, so Cameron's got 1085. Anybody else got anything? That's what I got. Everybody got the same? Yeah. All right, cool. So for fun, Cameron, you're on the hook, buddy, since you were the first one to comment. So let's do the math. At 108.5, how much is my commission? Seven thousand. No, oh, it's not. Sorry. That's a hundred thousand. Seven percent. Seven percent of a hundred and eight thousand five hundred. Not that one. Seven thousand. No. It's seven thousand five hundred and ninety-five dollars. That's what yeah. I just. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's yeah. It. So now subtract that off what we sold the house for one zero eight five. That leaves us with a hundred thousand. Nine hundred and five dollars. Then we have fifteen hundred in closing costs, because that's what we said. What's that leave us with? Ninety-nine thousand four hundred five. Ninety-nine thousand four hundred five dollars. Does that clear her lien? No. No. So Cameron now calls me and goes, hey, Raymond, we did a math problem uh, error. We're short. And I'm like, no, 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 Cameron. You're short. You didn't call me. That's coming out of your half. Because I would have told you, and here's the math problem. This is the hardest math problem to explain. You cannot take 7% of 100 grand and add it on top and get a thousand of that 7,000 back. Everybody get what I'm saying? You cannot take a percentage and add it back on top and then get that same percentage because as you saw here, you guys took 7%. Let me get this. You guys took that 7% of this mm -hmm. and yeah. added it over here and then took the percentage. But notice with this, that's not $7,000. So let's do this a different way. By the way, everybody puts that number in. Everybody. So here's how this math really works. There is, I'm not a very good drawer, and this is even worse on this thing. This is a pile of money that the buyer brought in. My question to you is, how much is that money? So here, here's how we're gonna think about this. Of this money, it is an unknown number, so let's call it, x 
And already I start to see beads of sweat on your guys' forehead because here comes that algebra. I like algebra. <laughs> That algebra that your math teacher or your parents or your friends go, you'll never need algebra in your life. Ta-da, here we go. Now, so of this amount of X, how much do I get? I get 7% of it, right? So that means how much is left for the client to claim? If I get seven, they get 93. So they actually get 93% of X. And that 93% or that pile of money better equal all of their bills. And how much are their bills for this closing? Right? Yeah. But that is only 93% of X. We want 1X. So math tells us that we can divide by 0.93. That goes to 1. And I can do that as long as I do this on the other side. So now, someone tell me, with your calculator, $101,500 divided by 0.93. The answer is? 109, 139. Okay. That would be the minimum number that you can accept and also pay everything off. And if you don't want, believe me, we can run through the math, take 109,000, multiply by 7%, that's my commission, <clears throat> subtract that off that, you're left with 101.5. Then when you subtract the closing costs, you are left exactly with that number, which pays off the lien, right? So my next question, let's do it again just to make sure. If she has to pay off 125,000, they've got 1,200 in closing costs, and Raymond really likes this client, so they're going to do it five for five and a half percent. My question is, what's the minimum list amount? Once you do this three or four times, you are going to find that there is a very common pattern that will allow you to do this in bang, 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 three steps. So somebody tell me, what that is, let me do this real quick. Anybody get a number? I got one. 108.605. But I think I did it a different way. Um, it was correct or not. So one you're going to tell me we listed for less than she knows? I got 133,545. That's what I got. That's what I got. Well, 133,545. That's the answer. The only key that you need to understand here is if I get five and a half percent, 
How much does the client get? 94.5%. 94 and a half, right? Yeah. You don't really need to know my number commission. You just need to know the percentage. And you have to understand that whatever the difference between the percentage and the whole amount is what they get. If I get six, they get 94. If I charged one, they would get 99. Gotcha. If I charge 10%, they get 90. And then all you have to understand is that 90 or 96 or whatever number has to equal all of their bills. And literally, we could play this game. You, Your client could go, well, I owe 100, and I want to pay my car off of 4,000, and I want to pay a, a credit card of 2,000. So in theory, you could just keep adding up numbers. Now, the reality is that's not true because at some point, that, that number to list it at, that 133 that we just had, has to be a realistic number because remember the appraiser is going to come in and go, hey, that house is only worth 130. You can't sell it for 133. So when you start adding all those numbers up for your client, you've got to understand and tell them, hey, wait a minute, stop. I literally had this issue with my own wife. When we sold our house in Bloomington, Kelly said, oh, I'd like to pay my credit card off. I get it, honey, but you understand that your credit card bill has nothing to do with the value of your house. We can add it in, and if it appraises and we can get a purchase, then yeah, we can pay it off. But the reality is those don't really have anything to do with each other. And if you don't believe me, let's play the stupid example. Suppose they want to sell it at 125 and tell you, I want to walk away with a million. Okay, we can do the math and come up with the listing at 1.4 million. Doesn't mean it's going to sell or appraise. So while you can literally do the math easily, just add 100 grand, add five for a bank account, add three for the car, and do the math. The problem is, does that number really reflect the value of the house? Okay. There's a couple test questions like this. So just remember the most important part is realizing whatever I get is subtracted from the total amount. I get six, they get 94. All right.